There are myths spreading around about the M1 Max and external SSD performance. Apple charges a premium for SSD upgrades on the M1 Max, and these drives can't be upgraded later on, which leaves you with a tough choice because you want that better performance and yet, you know, money. Now, rather than upgrading the internal storage, you may wanna get a less expensive external SSD which still gives you outstanding performance and saves you money. I picked six drives at different price points and I ran them through several tests, both software-based and actual use. And I also did a comparison with the internal SSD. Now, what I noticed is that there's a significant difference in performance between the various options. So I'm gonna help you get past the numbers and pick a great SSD for your needs and budgets. Let's very quickly look at the drives, starting with the Pioneer APS XS03. It's a small and light drive, and it's the least expensive one on the list at $98. Now, one of the things that turns me off about this drive is that it uses a USB 3.1 micro B10 pin connector. And that's a long way of saying that it's that funny USB cable that you never have lying around. And Pioneer reports a maximum speed of 400 megabytes per second. Next, we've got the PNY Pro Elite. It's shorter than the APS XS03, but it's also a little wider. It's compatible with USB 3.1 Type A and Type C ports. PNY reports 890 megabytes per second read and 900 megabytes per second write speeds. And the one terabyte version costs $126. Now the next drive I chose is the Samsung T7, which is longer than the PNY Pro Elite, but thinner. Now Samsung reports transfer speeds of up to 1,050 megabytes per second. It's compatible with USB 3.1 Gen 2, and the one terabyte version costs 150 bucks. Now another drive at this same price point is the SanDisk Extreme Pro. It's bigger than the Samsung T7, but it has a more rugged design, with a forged aluminum body plus a silicon rubber coating. That gives it an IP55 rating for water and dust resistance. The SanDisk reports 1,050 megabytes per second transfer speeds. And as I mentioned, this drive is also 150 bucks for the one terabyte version. Now, next on the list is the Caldigit Tough Nano. It's shorter, but thicker than the SanDisk Extreme Pro, and it has an IP67 rating. That means that unlike the SanDisk drive, which is partially protected against dust and is protected against low pressure water jets, the Tough Nano is totally dust tight and it can be fully submerged in water at depths of up to three feet for up to 30 minutes. I'm not gonna try that, but it's supposed to be able to handle that. The reported transfer speeds, again, are 1,050 megabytes per second. The Tough Nano is compatible with Thunderbolt 3, USB-C, USB-A, and USB-4 ports, and the one terabyte version is $220. Now, the last drive is definitely unique, and this is the OWC Envoy Pro EX, and it's clearly much larger than any of the other drives on this list, and it's the most expensive. Now, it offers military standard A10G protection from drops, has reported max speeds of 2,800 megabytes per second, so by far the fastest on this list, and the one terabyte version costs 300 bucks. All right, now that we have our contenders, let's see how they performed at each of my tests. The first test is the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, which will show us read and write speeds. As far as read speeds, performance pretty much aligned with price, with a few notable exceptions. The SanDisk outperformed the T7 even at the same price point, and even edged out the more expensive CalDigit Tough Nano. Now take a look at that OWC Envoy Pro, which absolutely crushed the competition and provided similar speeds to the internal drive. For write speeds, again, performance was closely related to price, with the SanDisk Extreme Pro outperforming the T7 and the CalDigit Tough Nano. For the second time, we see the Envoy Pro EX almost matching the speed on the internal drive, which is insanely fast. Now moving on to my next test, I wanted to compare sequential and random read and write speeds. Sequential speeds are what you would expect when copying or moving large files. And this is the best performance you're going to get from your SSD. Now random speeds on the other hand are what you would expect when you're working with complex programs that deal with a lot of smaller files. The test I ran uses thousands of 32 kilobyte files to test this type of performance, and this is the lowest performance that you should expect from your SSD. Now, starting with read sequential, performance aligned perfectly with cost, and as you went up in price, we see that speeds improve, 
all the way up to the OWC Envoy Pro EX with an impressive 2,667 megabytes per second. Now with write sequential, we see that the CalDigit was outperformed by both the SanDisk Extreme Pro and the Samsung T7. And between those, the SanDisk came out on top. This is definitely an area where we also see a major difference between the Pioneer and the PNY. Now moving on to the read random, the PNY, T7, and SanDisk drives outperformed the CalDigit Tough Nano, and every drive was well ahead of the Pioneer. Finally, on the right random test, the SanDisk stood out in the middle of the pack, outperforming every drive and getting very close to the OWC. Now the next test I performed was more of a real life test. So I created a 10 gigabyte file and then I tested speeds by copying it from the internal drive into each of these drives and then from each of these drives back onto the internal drive. Now, unlike the previous test, these results are shown in seconds, so the actual time it took the transfer to complete. Like I said, I started out by copying the 10 gigabyte file from the computer onto each one of these drives. The Pioneer APS XS03 was the slowest at 29.23 seconds, followed by the PNY Elite Pro at 28.14, the Samsung T7 at 16.1, the CalDigit Tough Nano at 15.5, SanDisk Extreme Pro at 13.07, and the OWC Envoy Pro EX at a blazing 7.1 seconds. Now next, I copy the file from each SSD back onto the internal storage. Here, speeds lined up nicely with price, with the Pioneer APS XS03 being the slowest at 29.34 seconds, followed by the PNY Elite Pro at 20.08, the SanDisk Extreme Pro at 16.24, Samsung T7 at 16.23, CalDigit Tough Nano at 16.06, and the OWC Envoy Pro EX, crushing everyone by a mile at 6.03 seconds. Now let's get to the conclusion. And if you're still with me and have gotten value from this video, give it a thumbs up. It lets me know what kind of content you like so that I can make more of it. And I see that over 90% of you are new viewers, so hit that subscribe button. Picking the right SSD comes down to what tasks you'll be performing and how much you're willing to spend on faster speeds. The OWC Envoy Pro EX was by far the fastest SSD that I tested, and it almost matched the speeds of the internal drive. When comparing the $300 for the one terabyte to the 400 bucks it would cost to upgrade an M1 Mac Mini, MacBook Air, or MacBook Pro from the included 256 gigs to one terabyte, you're paying 33% less and you're getting 25% more storage with the Envoy Pro EX. So if you want that next level performance plus the additional versatility of sharing a drive between different devices, this is an excellent option. My only concern about this drive is that the Thunderbolt 3 cable is attached, so if anything were to happen to it, you wouldn't be able to simply get another cable and use it. Now, I've never had this type of cable actually get damaged, and I like the fact that it's connected because I never lose or forget it, so I still use this as my main external drive. Now, if you're looking at the middle of the pack, the SanDisk Extreme Pro and the Samsung T7 offered outstanding value. And I would go with the CalDigit drive if you wanted the IP67 level of protection. Now between the lowest two, it's a tougher choice because there wasn't always a significant difference in performance. And if you're going to pay 126 bucks for the PNY Elite Pro, you might as well save a couple of extra bucks and then pick up the T7 or the SanDisk Extreme Pro. Remember that I have links in the description to all the products that I talked about. Hopefully this video was helpful. Click on my face to subscribe and then watch one of these videos. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.